Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name's Jason Newland, and this is your weekly Tuesday chronic pain session. I should really call it chronic pain relief session, but never mind. Uh, I guess it's kind of obvious, or maybe not. But these sessions I've been doing every week for quite a few weeks now. And each session, I try and give you a different focus, a different outlook from a different direction. To maybe change the way that you feel inside and change in that particular body part, which was causing you discomfort before you decided to watch this video. So whatever the part of your body that is a problematic to you, um, there may be more than one part. It may be uh, a sense in your mind of an all encompassing uh, sensation throughout your body so what we need to do for the sake of the video for the sake of this session uh, and we can grow and build upon that is to focus just on one part because then you can get that tester you can get that uh, result you know you can gain some trust and knowledge from having done this session and the experience of it can open your mind in a different direction so you can maybe look at things in a different way and a question might come into your mind after this session's finished or maybe even during I don't know which or when but the question would be, what else could you use this for? Or it could be, how else could you use this? How could you add something of your own personality into this uh, technique of reducing those discomfort feelings? And that's what this is about. This is about ultimately um, reducing the feelings of chronic pain wherever they may be um, the important thing of course is that you know the cause of your discomfort you've been to the doctors uh, and you know medical professionals and all that stuff and you know the reason behind it and it's safe for you to watch this and it's safe for you to use whatever techniques whatever um, things that you can, that are at your disposal to reduce those feelings. And I would recommend, because it's always good to recommend your own stuff, I would recommend, as well as listening to the Chronic Pain uh, Tuesday weekly sessions, I'd recommend listening to my daily relaxation hypnosis sessions I do a daily session and it's something that you will benefit from because every day is a different session every day is a different route to the same result of deep relaxation I mean it's ultimately the same result but although it's the same result it's different feelings it's maybe different body parts, maybe it's just your mind, maybe it's feelings of comfort towards the future, feelings of comfort towards stuff that's happened in the past, changing things, changing your responses and your reactions to certain individual situations that were problematic and limiting to you. And that changes over time. And that's why I do the daily sessions and that's why that's why I do the weekly sessions as well because it's good to have more than one 
thing to use personally. Um, I would potentially get a lot more views if I just did a long hypnosis session for chronic pain and did one of those and gave it a flashy name, um, which I have, well, no, I haven't done. I've done some quite, um, been a little bit creative with some of the, the names of my sessions and they do get attention and uh, especially the insomnia ones and you know some of them are, went and became quite popular but at the moment I'm just focusing on doing regular sessions even though the content I would say is better than the other stuff it's just about progressing it's about having that regular place that you can come back to every week or every day I'm noticing the cameras going in and out a bit um, that happens whenever I have a bath the camera doesn't recognize me so like, oh it's clean it's a clean version and um, you can gain from that progression because when we learn we learn by repetition quite often we have a one-off learning with a lots of different things, especially with things like phobias. There's a one-off learning, um, and we do learn things very quickly. But it sticks with us when we repeat, repeat it, when we learn with repetition. And with these sessions, there is repetition, of course. There's been repetition within this session of what I've already said, and I'm repeating what I've said. But that's okay because that's what we do that's what I do that's what you listen to if you're here so I'm going to get on with the session and I quite like this this uh, particular I don't like the word technique really but I'm going to use the word technique this procedure procedure sounds too medical it's a visualization but not in a some kind of weird world uh, you know visualizing things that you've never experienced before uh, although if you experience if you can visualize uh, experience in pleasure on a scale that you've never experienced before then do it turn this off and do that instead because that pleasure filling your body will override any feelings of discomfort. So if you're able to do that, then I suggest you do that. Uh, I will be um, doing sessions like that in the future. I will be doing, I've done some of those already with the relaxation sessions. So it's not always about relaxing and calming everything down. Sometimes you can boost the good feelings up. Not sometimes, always if you choose. You can boost, intensify the pleasant feelings. So it's not always about dulling the, the, you know, the unpleasant stuff and reducing it. I mean, it's that's a lot of what happens with chronic pain sessions. But when you've got something else that's actually stronger, a stronger feeling, like seeing your child for the first time overrides any sense of pain and discomfort no matter how many hours the birth lasted the process seeing your baby healthy in your arms looking at you with those big eyes for the first time that feeling will override any of the other feelings Regardless, even if you had to have surgical procedures afterwards to um, fix your body after maybe, you know, the, the birth, that feeling of having your baby, looking at your baby, smelling your baby, holding the feeling, seeing your baby, that overrides everything. The same as seeing your grandchild. You know, it could be anything that could be a good feeling. I mean, for me, 
I've um, I live with a polecat or a ferret called Andre, and he's my boy. He's my son, and uh, we're a dif different species, of course. But I love him. I've had him since he was a baby, and you know, as a human being, I have days and I have times when things are a bit, ooh, you know, and maybe feeling sorry for myself. Uh, maybe angry about something or whatever, you know, and I walk into my bedroom and I see him lying down with his tongue out asleep and he's the cutest, the cutest thing in the world and just, it melts my heart every time I see him asleep, just all curled up and he gets different positions and some of those positions are just like the, the weirdest yoga <laughs> that you could imagine. It's just, I don't know how he does it, but he's got like a real bendy body, bendy spine. It's absolutely beautiful and it just, it melts my heart. That feeling overrides any feelings of discomfort um, or displeasure that I was experiencing before I walked into my bedroom. Any feelings of you know, feeling sorry for myself, gone. So you can actually maybe play with that idea. Have a look at what else could you do which gives you such strong, positive, pleasurable feelings that can override the other stuff. So that's worth thinking about, I would say. Um, but this session isn't about that. After all that, this is a completely different thing. Um, <laughs> perhaps I should do a session about overriding sessions now that I've uh, started thinking about it. So we'll do, we'll do two things. I don't normally do two, but I'll do two today. So with this session, I want you to think about, you've already done it, you've already thought about a baby, you've already thought about something in your mind. I know you have because I've thought about it and we're both kind of connected. So I'm guessing that when I was talking, you were thinking about something that gave you pleasure, something that um, was very powerful. It's a power that you don't, um, it's like you you can produce it but it's so natural so um, huge I mean it's just instant it's like seeing a little kitten it's like seeing um, having compassion for uh, somebody that's ill you know going into a hospital um, I remember walking through the hospital and I was going to be volunteering, doing, uh, you know, um, selling crisps and papers and stuff in the hospital. And I went through the uh, chemotherapy ward where people were just all sitting around having um, chemotherapy um, pumped into them, the chemicals or whatever it is. There's no other feeling but incredible compassion and um, I don't even know if I can give a word to the emotion that I had the feeling that I had it was just you know the world I mean I'm quite self-centered most of the time but the world really wasn't about me in that moment you know it's uh, put things into a perspective during that time I always find a way to get back to me and to focus on my own life and to become the most important person in the world but um, to me that is but to be able to get to a point where I'm taken out of that and the power of like a newborn baby or seeing Andre lying asleep or seeing somebody fall over, like seeing a, a, an elderly person fall over, and suddenly whatever was in my mind before that happened, 
was gone. And I'm running and I'm helping that person up. And there was one time, um, a couple of years ago, three years ago, a lady, I think she broke her ankle. Her ankle was very swollen, so I think she broke it. And she was lying on the floor and something in me just thought, you know what, how... Possibly not the worst part of her experience was having a broken ankle. That's just the physical sensation. It's painful. Her adrenaline was kicking in. She probably, she wasn't really experiencing the full extent of the discomfort physically. But emotionally, she was lying on a floor in a public place next to a very busy supermarket. Half on the road, half on the pavement. So... I decided to lie down on the floor with her. And I lied there until the ambulance got there. And I covered over with my, with my coat and someone had a blanket uh, thing out of the shop, had a little pillow and stuff. But I don't know why, I just, I just lied on the floor. I thought, well, why? at least she's not the only one lying on the floor. And I just told her jokes, just made her laugh and said silly things but I wasn't thinking about myself I wasn't you know something in my mind changed and whatever pain whatever discomfort I was going through in my life at that time and I was at that time completely vanished because I was focused on something else and I wasn't upset, I wasn't in a situation where I was upset because it wasn't an incredibly serious situation. She, she, she possibly broke her ankle. Apart from that, she didn't bash her head or anything. She was okay and she was laughing. She was okay. She hadn't, as far as I know, damaged any other part of her body, you know? Um, so visually it wasn't a, a traumatic experience. But there's something about focusing on something else. A lot of that is what hypnosis does, is focus on something else. Or transforming a focus that you already have. Finally tuning it. This is what chronic pain hypnosis is. This is what pain to, to change any feeling that you have really. It's really that simple. You just change it. You slightly fine tune that feeling you think about something else not in the same way as watching television or reading a book because yeah that can be incredibly good for distracting you and it could be um, especially if you're an avid reader you could get into the book and it could transform you to a different or well, literally to a different world you know depending on what kind of book you're reading and take you out of your body and give you some respite, you know, that's brilliant. As the same as watching television, you might watch something or a movie, it will take you out of yourself and you'll focus on that. There's a step further up than that, it's something that gives you incredible pleasure. Of course the book or the television or the film could give you huge pleasure as well. So it's finding something that you gain huge pleasure from it could be a memory it could be a thought it could be a photograph it could be a video of a wedding or um, a christening or you know whatever it could be you know the list is endless it's personal to you so finding something that is good for you something that you can find which elevates your feeling of pleasure to like a high level. That is so much more powerful, so much stronger than any feeling of chronic pain. Because the chronic pain, the only power it has over you is your response to it, your emotional response to it. 
So with chronic pain, if you don't have the anxiety, the stress, the panic connected to the pain, the pain itself doesn't have that much hold on you. It's only your response to it that gives it the power, that makes it stronger, that gives it the energy and gives it the kind of the sense of control that you feel it has maybe over you. So by reducing your stress, reducing your anxiety, reducing any panic feelings you have connected to future bouts of that discomfort, changes, it changes it. Because you're no longer allowing yourself to be the slave of that feeling. You're no longer allowing yourself to be controlled by that feeling. Because it is just a feeling. And I know it's easy to say that. It's an easy sentence to say it's just a feeling. All feelings are just feelings, obviously. Everything is just a feeling. Even that pleasurable, you know, off the scale of pleasure that you get from that special moment in your life. Uh, maybe it's seeing your grandchild for the first time. Maybe it's meeting your wife or your husband or getting married or, you know, whatever it is. Or it could be something even more personal that we can't mention. You know, it could be anything that is powerful in your mind and your body. Something that doesn't just stay in your mind. Something that when you think about it, you know, you do get a smile. You do get a feeling and a sense of well-being when you think about it. You do get a sense of happiness and that just spreads down your body, down your shoulders, down your arms, into your hands, down your chest, into your stomach. You can feel it across your face, your head, the back of your neck, all the way down your back, your hips, your legs, your groin, your buttocks, all the way down your legs to your ankles and your feet and your toes, your arms and your hands and your fingers, fingertips, your mouth, your lips, your tongue, your eyes, your eyelids your jaw, your forehead, your throat, you can feel it in all parts of your body. And that's, that's one of the things that um, is so amazing about the power of positive, happy, real thoughts because it's not in my mind it's not the same as positive thinking uh, because I don't know it seemed I've read quite a few self-help books over the years and it seems that some of the positive thinking that is you know is thought of is kind of like being false you know uh, fake it till you make it kind of pretending to be to, to be positive and forcing yourself to be a certain way when we've all got stuff inside us all got memories that are so powerful you know so beautiful so amazing that you don't have to fake anything you don't have to pretend you don't have to force anything it's actually there and it's available to access any time you choose because just in your memory it's a memory that you trigger and to have that memory it's just it's powerful in itself and you know what we all know that things can attach themselves and I think that, because we've all got knowledge and, you know, there's 
triggers. We all know we have triggers and certain people uh, seem to have the power to trigger us. I mean, no one has the power to do that, but we give them, you know, the power to trigger our emotions of some kind. And of course, if that's a positive thing, if that's, uh, let's say you've got a loved one and uh, going back to your child or your grandchild and they smile at you and it's a natural trigger for feeling wonderful inside that you're going to welcome that trigger it's a brilliant trigger to have and it's a natural trigger to have and there'd be no reason to take any notice of it you know because it's such a pleasant positive and healthy thing if somebody's triggering you uh, and they say something like a boss maybe at work or some a colleague says something and your response is a feeling of uh, self-doubt or um, unhappiness or something like that then that's a trigger that is unhealthy and needs to be squashed gone has to be gone that feeling has to be squashed so that that person no longer has the effect and it's not that person's fault it's you know you can't blame the other person because you're the one having the response of course some people are out to cause problems uh, as we have probably all um, unfortunately been involved in some people like that who seem to gain pleasure by trying to cause displeasure in other people so the main thing is to make sure that you don't allow any of those triggers to happen so then you need to you know find ways to eliminate those triggers and not allow that to happen so to have that barrier you need to have that barrier between you and them at all times it needs to be there you know like um magnets you know when you've got magnets and they, they attach then you turn it around turn one round or turn them both around i'm not sure but they and they can't even touch each other and of course if it's a tiny little weak magnet you can push it together but it's it's hard but the big ones, you know, the bigger the magnet is, the harder it is to push it together if it's reversed. Well, maybe that's what you need to do. You need to put two magnets facing the other way. One on that person, one on you, so that you can't just can't allow yourself to get close to that person so they can't have that power that you've been given them to set off those little triggers within you so when that trigger gets sent to you it just sends it back because the magnet is reversed so that's uh, something you could have stay with you in your mind um, for future reference and to just change your life so yeah I was thinking we've talked about the power of having something so strong change your feeling and the problem with these sessions it's not a bad problem it's a good problem to have is that it seems in a sense like I've just been talking, just been rambling on. And I know that it can seem like that. But if you focus on your part of your body, the part of your body that was uh, causing you discomfort before, and just notice how different it feels now to how it felt before we started this video before we started talking before you started listening to my words and absorbing the ideas
Notice how different it feels. In fact, notice how your body feels more relaxed. Notice how your mind feels calmer. Because hypnosis isn't just about following a bunch of steps like a recipe, you know, of making a cake, you know, put in the sugar, put in the flour, mix it together, you know, certain measurements of this, certain measurements of that. Bake for a certain period of time. Don't eat, don't eat the cake straight out of the oven because you'll burn your mouth. That's the one thing I had to remember. It's made me hungry for cake now. But how are you feeling? I'd like you to either get a piece of paper and a pen or just think about it in your mind make a, a list of five things five occasions or uh, events whatever word you want to use in your life during your life so far where you experienced bliss complete bliss all through your body and in your mind okay and it could be it's personal for you I'm never going to see the list no one else is either unless you show it to people so it's going to be a list I say unless you show it to people because you know what I'm just thinking off the top of my head here. Sometimes letting other people know that something they've done has given you huge amounts of pleasure or maybe something, an experience that if you shared with another person, maybe your partner, your wife, your husband, maybe with your children, maybe with your husband, I uh, already said that, with your uh, parents, friends, colleagues, your boss, your employees, or anything like that. By sharing with them or that person that may be an experience that you have had with that person is one of the highlights of your life. one of those moments that you'll always remember and you'll always cherish one of those moments that you just have so much pleasure in your body and your mind whenever you think about it you don't have to tell them that bit but just tell them that it's one of the most uh, memorable occasions of your life that you cherish by telling somebody that your relationship with that person may actually be transformed. Give it a go. And more than that, you may actually get to experience more of those events in the future. Because there's a part of human nature that kicks in inside us all, I believe. Although it's you wouldn't see it on the television, you wouldn't see it on the news or in newspapers, but because it's a it's a nice thing about humans. But there's there's a part of us that kicks in when you find out that you've done something 
that's really meant a lot to somebody. Something that's been transformational for them. Something that's been an important part of their life. That's a major, that's a really amazing, amazing and major thing to hear that you have actually had a positive and healing and healthy effect on another person's life in such a way that you're one of their highlights of their life. And that kickstarts something in people. It can go two ways. Maybe it can go more than two ways, but two ways in my mind it can go. Either that person, it can transform their life by knowing that they've helped you. It can help them to feel good about themselves, but also in a realistic way, because it's true. There's a reason for themselves to think how amazing you are. If you've heard that, you're amazing that you've actually helped somebody else. That's a reason. That's like a real reason. There's no fake it till you make it. It's real stuff. And that then can become one of your highlights of your life. Because then you think about what it was like when you were told by your friend, by your family, by whoever it was, that you had made such a big impact on their life to the point where it's one of the highlights of their life, something that makes them feel amazing. That memory of that conversation, or reading it in a letter, or in an email, or a text, or however the communication was, you know, went by, that can become one of your highlights, so that you can feel wonderful. And by thinking of that, any physical discomfort that you might be having beforehand, which is reduce, will be overshadowed by the feelings of comfort, calmness, and happiness, pleasure throughout your whole body, your, your body, your mind, your face, you know, even internally. It's like these bubbles of joy going through your, through your, um, blood vessels and you know the oxygen going to different parts of your body and your mind and your brain and I've got to be careful with that because I don't know much about the anatomy but I'm just saying it's just everything feels joyful and happy and content and that's the strongest feeling and any other feelings of I don't know, unpleasantness that are trying to like get through, just get squashed. So I don't have a hope because you can't compete with that, can't compete with the feelings of complete pleasure, physically, emotionally, you know. The other ways it could go is when you tell someone that they've had the effect on you, is that person might go and do it to someone else. They might decide they want to give that feeling to somebody else. So that gift that you've received could be a gift that somebody else receives and again life transformational plus when you tell somebody they're going to feel wonderful inside you're going to feel wonderful inside having told them everyone wins And when you have this feeling of pleasure, 
this feeling, and it's not a fake pleasure, it's real. It really happened, it's a real thing. Nothing else can touch it, nothing else. As MC Hammer said, can't touch this. Okay, it wasn't the best uh, impression, but don't worry, I'm not gonna do the dance. So go back to that feeling, that physical feeling in your body. That feeling that was causing you uh, problems before you decided to start watching this and listening to my voice and just like, you know, interacting emotionally with this video. How does it feel now? Some people could even struggle to find it. It's like, okay. You know, when you go to the dentist and, you know, maybe you'd had toothache or something and you go to the dentist and when you actually get there, the dentist says, uh, so which tooth is it? And you're moving your tongue around trying to find the tooth. And it's, <laughs> it's, it's embarrassing. It's actually embarrassing. It's like, well, um, <laughs> it's one of them. I think it's on the bottom. Uh, there's something about just it goes. And it's annoying actually because you know you need it to be there for that moment. That's the thing with uh, pain, it's, it's not very logical. That's why it doesn't really need to be there most of the time it's just a warning and if you've already heeded the warning if you already know it's there if you already know to be careful of that body part maybe um why do you need that warning anymore you've got a smoke alarm in your house probably your home i've got one goes off occasionally because i'm not the best cook in the world Occasionally I burn stuff. The fire alarm goes off. I go into the kitchen. I open a window. I take whatever's in the oven out of the oven. I close the kitchen door. I turn the fire alarm off. Or the, the heat smoke alarm off. The food's burnt. The food continues to be burnt. When I go in there in 10 minutes time, the food is still burnt, but the, f the alarm's not going off anymore because I know that the place was getting full of smoke and I've done what is necessary to deal with that situation. I don't need the alarm going off all the time. It's good to have it there. It's important. It's potentially life-saving to have it there for emergencies but it's not useful to have it going all the time because if it went all the time I would get rid of it and then there would be the risk of you know danger because I wouldn't have that alarm for an emergency so I would need it that's the thing about having physical sensations that are no use to you when you already know that there's a cause there you already know to be careful with your knee or with your el elbow or your ankle or your shoulder whatever part of your body you need to be a bit careful with no one needs to remind you of that you don't need physical sensations to remind you of that or if you do just slight sensations you know just a small amount just enough, maybe like a little itch or just a little little throb maybe rather than um, being discomfort. So yeah, I always think the best, sometimes the best physical feeling as a warning is uh, 
having a cut, like a cut my finger, put a plaster on it. And although it doesn't hurt, you can feel the blood go into that part of your body to heal it. You know? And it's not painful. It's not really discomfort either. It's just a little maybe pulsating maybe, just slight. But you know that that represents healing. You know that that represents safety and at the same time a warning, just a slight reminder to be careful, to be sensitive, to just be kind to yourself really, you know, and to allow that part of your body to heal in its own time, in its own way without any interference from you or anyone else. And I think that's the most we ever need in any part of our body. Just enough to remind us to be careful. And of course, if there is a problem, then yeah, it needs to increase as the smoke alarm. If there's an emergency or there's something that needs to be taken care of, seriousness, the alarm goes off. We need that. It could be life-saving. But most of the time, we don't need the alarm going off. Really, really, it'd be annoying, so annoying. So I'd like you just to think it back, just think of that body part again. Go back and just notice it. Notice how it feels. Notice how it feels different from how it did at the beginning of this session. And maybe you're not sure why. Maybe logically it doesn't necessarily make sense that your that body part would relax really deeply um, and also be completely comfortable it doesn't doesn't logically make sense um, necessarily but it doesn't have to it's not about logic, it's not about anything other than just gaining the most that you can gain from these sessions and just allowing whatever naturally happens to happen. Bearing in mind that the title of the session is my aim to help you to change your physical sensations that's my goal with these sessions and the reason why it's quite long the reasons why I maybe seems like I'm just yabbering on about various different things is because it allows your mind to just wander a little bit um, allows you to absorb some of those suggestions coming from various different angles different ideas that maybe you'd like to try on for yourself so that's pretty much it for today I feel like I could go on for a long time actually today but we moved away from what I was originally going to do, but I will do that another time, um, maybe next week. But it's a different, completely different, uh, that was going to be a specific technique. So, but I felt that it was probably good to stick with what I was talking about, because when I started talking about 
having these feelings and how our some feelings can completely just wash our feelings away, you know, in the same way that it doesn't matter what you write on sand, you know, what you build on the sand, the the tide, you know, the, the sea will just come and wash it away. And because the sea is more powerful than any sand castle you're ever going to make. Um, in fact, the sea can eventually wash anything away, including cliffs. And, you know, it might take hundreds and thousands of years, but the sea has that power. The sea's the most powerful, one of the most powerful things in the world. Um, as is your mind. I mean, the power that the sea has over the world is what your mind and your imagination has over your body. Your thoughts have that power over your body the same way the sea has the power over the sand, over the world. So try and maybe think of your mind and your thoughts and your ideas as powerful as oxygen and the sea. As powerful as the sun. And then you can have more of an idea of just how endless the possibilities are for you to make changes in your life and also to help other people make changes in theirs. And maybe you can be one of those people, maybe you are anyway, that somebody else classes as one of the highlights of their life and many many people are that important to other people but don't realize it because they're not told and just imagine how many people that you have helped over the years and never found out about never realized maybe it's just a kind word maybe somebody dropped a wallet in the street and you picked it up and said oh you, you dropped your wallet who knows what would have happened to that person if you hadn't have stopped and they'd have gone home and or tried to go home or maybe they were on the way somewhere um, you know, their whole life may have been different. So, even though they don't know that you've helped them in a tremendously amazing way, you have. Because their life could have been really problematic had you not helped them. But because you helped them, their life has moved in a positive way. I like that kind of thinking. I wonder what else you may have done to help other people. You're really the best person to answer that. So that's the end of this quite a long session for today. Um, I think it's because they're weekly, so I'm kind of getting the idea because I do about 30 minutes a day with a relaxation. I think as these are weekly, I kind of want to spend a bit more time with you. I hope that's okay. So, my name's Jason. My website's jasonnewland.com. If you like what I do, please subscribe, uh, share the video, like it, comment it, and on it, and all that stuff. Um, also, you know, maybe listen to the daily relaxation hypnosis sessions as well because that can only help. You take care of yourself, and I'll see you next Tuesday. Bye.